Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today we are addressing another viewer question, thought, concern. Uh, the idea of using your floor tom as sort of a secondary bass drum, which is to say setting it up so it sort of sounds like your kick drum so you can kind of mix it in and uh, sort of, I don't know, do almost like double kick things, things like that. This is a sound that for me comes a lot from electronic music in particular where there's a lot of different sort of low drum samples involved in beats, dubstep, um, drum and bass, different things like that. I saw people using drums to emulate electronic sounds in Seattle um, before I ever moved out here, like back in the 90s, uh, KJ Saka, for instance, and a lot of other people too. Um, and oftentimes they would have a lot of low end options in the kit in addition to their primary bass drum. And a floor tom is a great option for that. Thanks again to our presenting sponsor, Promark by Daddario for helping us out. Today, we're gonna be hitting my GMS floor tom. It's a 16 by 16 maple. Uh, I brought it today because it's on legs. And for me, with these extra low tunings, I feel like I like the, the physicality of a drum that's sitting on the floor. Um, and also we're gonna be tuning it pretty low. Um, so in general, this thing is gonna vibrate <laughs> a lot. Um, so this seemed like the drum to do that with. So the things that go into this sound for me, first of all, are clear heads uh, rather than coated because I think of the sort of smack of an electronic bass drum sound or a, a fairly muffled low tuned kick that you might use for funk music or things where you needed to really punch through. Um, and we're trying to emulate that sound. So what we've done is tuned it in a sort of ordinary interval. The bottom head is somewhere between a whole step and a third um, higher than the batter. But in general, it's tuned quite low. Um, and as you'll see, it's got a lot of overtones. It's got a whole bunch of sustain. And so we have to figure out how to get rid of that. So right now it just sounds like a big floor tom. Um, so the next move is to start to add things to this to get the sound that we're after. And the main thing we need to do is we need to shorten the note, we need to lower the fundamental if, if possible, uh, and we need to get rid of the overtones because what we're after is just like a punchy, short, smacky kind of sound. And this kind of asks for a certain kind of muffling that's taking us out of floor tom territory and into this sort of bass drum territory. And there are lots of products you can buy that sort of are along the lines of what we're going to do today. Um, but basically, we're going to show one that's like a store thing and then one that's sort of a DIY kind of thing. So the first thing you can do is you can grab some kind of muffling ring. Today, we're going to use an E-ring from Evans. These have been around for a long time. It's basically just polyester film. Um, it's not that different than if you might have like cut it out of a drum head or something like that. Um, but the idea here is that it's way out at the edges, so it's not going to jump off the drum because it's not in the center. Uh, and you can get them in different sort of widths also that will tune the drum slightly differently. So that's pretty good. It definitely is in the right direction, but it's not changing the sound that dramatically. It still sounds like a floor tom. So the next step that we do is we take another drum head and we invert it, or if you want to, you can cut one out of the collar and lay it on there to basically create a second membrane on top of the main membrane to do all of those things we talked about before of lowering the fundamental and kind of squashing the overtones and taking us into like a punchy kick kind of territory. Today we're gonna use this hydraulic snare batter for this. Um, it's pretty thick, it's pretty beefy. Uh, this head does have oil between the plies. And uh, this is gonna have a large effect on this drum. There are lots of options if you were to use like a clear single ply head or even a snare side head for this. Um, you'll get all kinds of different levels of this effect, but we decided to just go extreme and go all the way out of the gate and you can back it off you know, as your needs may dictate. 
It's worth noting that you don't have to use the same size head as the drum that you're doing this on. Uh, the flesh hoop on the head that you're gonna set on the drum can come into contact with the counter hoop, um, causing like a clacking sound sometimes, um, especially if you're using die cast hoops or something that's taller than a regular triple flange. So it's just something to keep in mind. And if that's an issue that you're really running into a lot, that's when it's time to actually cut the flesh hoop off of this head, um, which is why we tend to use used heads for this purpose because we end up banging them up anyway. So basically we're all the way there. This is the method that I've seen done. Um, I've been doing it for years. I do it on the snare fairly often too for that kind of wide, like um, like that Steve Jordan thing that we did the other week. Uh, it's very effective for that. Uh, and it's very fast because you can put it on the drum, just take it right back off again um, and just keep an extra head like in your cymbal bag or in your snare case or whatever. So the, the one, I guess, last thing to mention about this is that the tuning of the floor tom does matter for this. And when you're doing this degree of affectation to the batter head, you need a lot of resonance, which means pitching the rezo head way down is not going to get you there. And frankly, pitching the batter head also way down isn't really going to get you there either because you're ultimately just going to kill the whole sound of the drum instead of killing a lot of it and keeping the sort of like thump underneath. So make sure that whatever you're doing with your drum, if you're going to do this, uh, it needs to be making a lot of tone. It needs to have a lot of resonance out of the gate so that you still have that when you're putting this amount of mass on top of the batter head. And again, it's worth noting that there are products out here that are for this purpose. Like, I mean, Big Fat Snare Drum, awesome. They're great products. They do the heck out of this. We're not using something that specific today other than like the little earring because we had it here. Um, just so that we're getting you in the mind of experimentation because at the end of the day, if you throw an old head on there and you like where that's going, you can go and get something that's more specialized and that's really designed for this and that will um, take you in yet another direction that won't be exactly that but might be something that'll appeal to you even more. All right, that's about it. So please like, comment, and subscribe, and please hit that notification button so you hear about our new videos. Thanks again to Promark by Diderio, presenting sponsor, for helping us out. And I bet there are a lot of you out here that do something like this with your drums. Uh, so let us know uh, not only what you use, but what sort of music you're making with it. Um, because I, I mean, I've been surprised recently to see like Antonio Sanchez is using big fat snare drum things, and it's, it's really crossing a lot of genres, and it's a really fun thing to mess around with.